And here we go. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Thursday's edition. Mastering Encompass. This is June 29th. It's 4th of July weekend. Everybody's pretty much on vacation, uh, I guess, except uh, myself and Luba and Amy, who, uh, who came today. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for coming. Uh, we are your biggest fan club right here. Oh, my God. You guys are awesome. Um, we have to come up with uh, some kind of plushie or something for Mastering Encompass. Want t shirt T-shirts, yeah. T-shirt. Your face on your face on the front, master and compass on the back. You want to hear and something? A, and a crown. And a crown. Okay. Yeah. That's a cool. A tiara crown. I like it. Um, I like it. So, um, so I was in a, a kickoff yesterday. It wasn't really a kickoff. I was in a meeting yesterday with client, um, and they're implementing lender toolkits. Um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, lender toolkits. Um. Uh, automated underwriting, you know, just not, I'm sorry, I totally screwed that up. Lender toolkits, uh, automated disclosures, sorry. Automated underwriting is the other thing that they they are very proud of. Um, anyway, my point is they, they, in the meeting, I got called out like, oh, you're, you know, the client's going to be like, oh, they're, you're going to be fine. You're with Larry. I'm like, dude, that's like no pressure. Like, <laughs> just the guy, I'm just the guy. Um, so, oh, Larry, we love you. Oh, thank you, Beth. I love you too. You're, you're, and I can only say that because my wife's not around to hear me. So. <laughs> um, hey, so uh, as we're going into the fourth um, and we're in the last uh, Zoom meeting for these, as a reminder for anybody here today or um, in, in wants to come to these in the future, um, please get over into uh, masteringencompass.com or mortgage.community. It's the same domain. Basically, getting to the Mastering Encompass community, get to the events and replays, and that's where you'll see. You can add them to your calendar. Um, we're also going to be doing some um, late night events. I know that the, this time of day, although convenient for work, uh, you know, for those that can do it, um, it's not always convenient to make it. And so I want to try and get more people um, showing up. Um, we're also helping loan officers and processors, underwriters. Um, some post closers, some secondary folks also with what they're doing and some questions they have. And that's not really practical for them to, to ask those questions during work hours kind of a thing. So we're going to be doing more uh, after hours, like, you know, six, seven, eight o'clock at night Eastern and see how that works out. Um, I'll be out in the, yeah, workflow partners after dark, Brian. I like it. That's a t-shirt. Now that's a t-shirt right there. Uh I'm going to be doing um, in a couple of weeks. I'm flying out to go uh, to go visit uh, one of my daughters who lives in Oahu, and so it's very easy for me to work late East Coast hours out there because I'm six hours behind. In any event, um, again, these 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 events are always about you. So, um, does anyone have any questions, scenarios, anything you want to work through together as a group on the call today? If you do, um, go ahead and uh, speak up, put it in chat, whatever, we can do a screen share. Um, the topic I wanted to talk about today was uh, sales and operations tools, because normally in Encompass, we all get sucked into the world of custom input forms um, or plugins, and we tend to underappreciate or even be unaware of tools that are in Encompass native. And so I always like to exploit uh, as much as I can before before I can go on. It does sound like an adult site, Amy. Um, workflow partners after dark. Um, I like where your mind went right away. It's it's totally clean. It's great. Uh, so I want to go through those tools here and talk about the things that I find helpful uh, for sales and operations team. And uh, and also get your feedback too. Again, for those that are here or those that are watching. Um, Marissa, if you don't have a commercial Zoom account, just sign up for Zoom um with a free account but honestly get out just get over to uh, masteringencompass.com and um that's where they will be after today june 29th where you can see the replays or catch the live events but today if you're trying to get into this now just go create uh, like a gmail account your personal email um with with zoom and it will work i've been asked about this before and it will work but um, you do have to have a Zoom account to log in to the live. Okay. Should I let Katie in, Amy? I guess I should, right? Okay. 
So we'll let Katie in. So yes, please. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> when I go through the tools, the, the part that really interests me the most um, that we typically work with, um, the first one is, and I'm going to do this in alphabetical order because it's easy and it's the same in everybody's encompass. Um, but the audit trail I like to talk about um, because I find that this gets misunderstood, um, especially if you're implementing Encompass new, the idea of an audit trail from another LOS platform, um, you might get this idea like, I want everything audited all the time. And so I do like to just share the common knowledge um, if, you, if you go in these circles. Audit trail is from the reporting database. So in order for a field to be in the audit trail, it needs to be in the reporting database first. It needs to be marked as auditable. Um, be, wa be wary of this, gang. If, you know, the rule of thumb that I've always had success with is if you have more than 250 fields in the audit trail, you're going to start to probably mm -hmm. see some degradation in terms of your, your performance. Um, there are plugins out there uh, that you can um, do uh, uh, audit trail where you can actually pull the entire files audit trail as a consolidated search instead of clicking on your field and then um, hitting show and only to discover that field two is not in the audit trail. You also cannot um, pull in multiple fields. So having said that, there are a lot of folks who don't rely on the audit trail. What I would rather see you do, again, this is Encompass customization, but it did come up in the community recently. Um, if you go into Loan Custom Fields, you can create any custom field as an audit. And I don't know, for those that are admins here on the call, I don't know how many of you create these audit fields, but I do this quite often when it comes to check boxes on custom input forms. Anybody else do that besides me? So um, unless you get a tool, it does not require that. I'm not sure what that was for, Lugo. Um, oh, oh, you mean to add it to the audit trail? So yeah. you can... Yeah, you can get a plugin, right? You can get you can write a plugin that listens for webhooks in through the Encompass API and grab um, and grab all the changes as they're happening um, into a loan file to avoid an audit trail kind of a thing. But that's the audit trail tool. Not everybody has plugins. Not everybody has third party tech. Um, but that's the way that, that works. Um, yeah, and it's good. It's good. I like I like having audits, uh, you know, fields in the audit trail. It's important. Um, I just went through this exercise with um, with a client. If you don't have there's there's a uh, there's an input form that's floating out in public domain where you can export all of your fields and you can uh, from your reporting database into an Excel sheet. And in that report is a list of what fields are in the audit trail. If you don't have that. Um, I'll drop that in the community um, with this replay. Uh, it's a simple button click on a simple input form. Um, but make sure you take advantage of that because you, you want to make sure that you understand how many fields are in your audit trail, especially if um, you're not sure if you're getting the best performance out of your Encompass. Um, it's one of those things to keep track of. Uh, let's see here. Let's go ahead and Amanda. Um, AOS tracking tool. I bring this up, even though, again, most companies use this, um, but if you're using DO, um, you're not going to find use for this. So if you're a shop, if you're a DO shop, you kind of lose this history. <clears throat> again, you can get a third party plugin, lots of third party plugins, but you can get a third party plugin that actually will track the DO history versus just the DU. Um, this is good. These fields are usable in business rules. So that's a good uh, place. As a loan officer or salesperson, et cetera, um, also it's healthy to use AUS recommendation up here, whether you're using um, LPA or D, uh, DU, where you can put that somewhere, you can easily see that, that status. So that's a, that's a, a good one to, to focus on. Cash to close. Um, it's, it's like, oh, well, this is the 1003 or the URLA lender now. Um, you'll see this little, uh, input form in a lot of different places. The field, it's important to know that in a lot of these tools, most of these tools, these field IDs are the same as the Encompass field ID. So if you're in a situation where these fields are not um, 
Oh, we're not sharing anymore? Oh my gosh. You guys are gonna yell at me. Thank you, Luba. So um so we were talking about the audit trail. You're seeing the screen okay now, right, Luba? Um, yes. Yeah, sorry about that. Thank you very much for keeping me honest here. So in the AUS tracking, what I was trying to show here was the AUS recommendation field. So this A, uh, AUSF.x3. Use this if you're not seeing this anywhere else other than the AUS tracking tool. Um, some companies will use this on a summary screen uh, or their pipeline view, which gets back to the reporting database. Um, Cash to close, what I was showing on this was the purchase price and the, you know, all of these fields are the standard encompass fields. And um, part of the challenge that, get, that you run into in the native tools is sometimes salesperson can't modify these uh, fields for scenarios. And I'm going to talk about scenarios uh, in, in a minute, but I do recognize that sometimes this tool is limiting because it is... Um, you know, it's you can do this on the 1003. You can do this on the URL lender, um, that kind of a thing. From a um, from a uh, I'm in a test and of course that's not enabled. But from a lot of places, the compliance review in sales and operations again is is either not used or improperly leveraged. Uh, make sure that you're working with your team to properly leverage the compliance review for your previews versus your reviews. Um, I say this specifically in the sales side because if you're working in an encompass where you're not leveraging the preview and you're getting, you have lower loan amounts and your fees aren't necessarily changing as your loan amounts decrease, you want to watch to make sure you're not going to end up having any issues when that file goes for disclosures. So you might have the benefit of an administrator who kind of gives you those looks. Um, you might understand the ATRQM. Um, points and fees test input form if you're that deep into operations as a salesperson. But um, if nothing else, on the sales side, um, if you're not leveraging the compliance review tool to double check um, how the file looks before it goes into disclosures, it's certainly something to explore. Um, if, if, uh, if you are getting feedback that there's problems with your loans before they go to disclosures. So I do talk about that compliance review in ops. Uh, the part, my feedback for this is make sure that you're using it for preview before any disclosure event. And then in the appropriate spot for a review, make sure that you're checking it. Uh, my, my best practices are um, before the fog goes for initial underwrite, before that fog goes in for um, final underwrite. Um, obviously, again, anytime we have uh, LE or CD going out, um, we're doing the preview. Um, but then also I have my closers doing a, a final um, check on the review before they to make sure the file is good before they start working on it. And then they do a preview before they send your closing package out. Really important to understand why these two kinds of, of uh, runs exist and to leverage them properly. If you're not running previews, definitely let's talk more because um, that's an important part. Uh, any questions so far? I want to take a breath. I don't see anything coming through on the chat besides um, me forgetting to share a screen. So thank you very much for that, Lula. Um, in terms of the next big tool that, that comes up is debt consolidation. I don't know very many sales folks that actually use this. Um, you're typically floating in the VOL. And, and uh, what this little tool does on the sales side is you can kind of play around with these fields. As a reminder, all these tools are, are native. So you can't customize anything. Um, but what you can do is leverage what's here. Yeah, it's older. Yeah, it looks like it's, you know, it's maybe not the best use case for what you're trying to do. Um, but you do have things up in here that tie over to the itemization. Uh, if you want to change the margin, if you're dealing with a HELOC or, or an ARM um, or your loan type or your occupancy or position. And then if you want to pay stuff off, it'll change your, your cash down here. So it's a quick way for you to figure out your LTVs and your CLTVs. Um, and, you know, you can obviously update your interest rate here. Um, what, you're, what you're not seeing, of course, is um, your full, you know, your, your full PITI. Uh, a. So if, um, if, you, if you haven't been using this to play around, it's an option. 
something else that comes up is they're like, you're like, but Larry, I've got more than this many liabilities. And that's what this VOL pop outs for. So you can kind of come in. So again, so you don't have to leave the, um, the confines of, of this input form to mark off what you want to exclude and then close that. Um, I always say, re, you know, re-click it to recalculate to uh, catch up with what you're doing. So that one's pretty cool. Um, that again, I find a lot of folks don't uh, use uh, on the sales side for debt consolidation. Disclosure tracking tool. Um, this is like its own little piece. Um, why you would use this in sales is probably zero, um, unless you are going back because you're trying to close a loan quickly and you want to find out something about how quickly you can close this loan. So if you're not familiar with the disclosure tracking tool, just a quick primer. Everything that is marked as tracked in the disclosure history of the administrative settings is going to be listed down here. So sometimes companies track like appraisals being sent. Sometimes they're just the LEs or the CDs or the TILs or the GFEs. Some companies do files without um, LEs, CDs or anything like that. And they, they have other disclosures that they're tracking. Maybe you're tracking like the important terms being sent. Anyway, my point is that um, anything that you're looking to have tracked down here is, is here. The earliest closing date is a calculated field from Compass. It's normally trustable. Um, there are times where you want to double check, specifically when you have multiple 1003 sets. So um, ICE is, you know, LMA prior to ICE, but ICE has worked um, diligently to make sure that that's reliable. And um, I have not found a case where it is technically wrong on its own. I did find a case last week um, with a client leveraging the Blend platform um, that, uh, excuse me, the Simple Nexus platform, sorry, Blend, the Simple Nexus platform where a non-occupying co-borrower did not electronically sign the CD. They didn't even log in to see it. And uh, the, the uh, the CD, this is GFE file, but the, the CD tracking showed it had been received. And even when you opened up the disclosure event, it plainly showed the non-occupying co-borrower did not electronically view the CD. And um, they actually closed the file early. Uh, now, the business made a decision that they were fine because it was a purchase and they had an opinion as far as um, does the non-occupying spouse or non-borrowing spouse need to acknowledge a CD to do earliest close date. Um, that's a whole different thing. Uh, so time zone, is that new? Oh, over here? Um, that is newer, uh, Luba. Yeah, disclosure tracking time zone is, is newer. Um, I don't know when that was released, but it's not always been there. Uh, and Chris, only if you mail it. <laughs> so, uh, you, you know, for, for, for a third party platform to come in and say that the borrower received it the same day the first borrower electronically signed, that's my problem on here. Um, so it's only electronic if you can only use the mailbox rule for the electronic if the borrower, e, if the recipient e consented before you sent the disclosure. In this case, they didn't. So um, feel free to, you know, we can talk more about it after the meeting in the community if you want, but it, it's definitely a problem, um, and this is where you want to come if you're in sales or operations to really figure out your earliest closing date, but pay attention to all of your disclosure events, please. Uh, some of the other things that are happening down here, here's that, um, sorry, loan comparison tool. So this goes back to that scenario, um, that, you know, the, the, uh, the cash to close tool. What's nice about this, and I wish there was like one more, um, but what's nice about this is these are the encompass fields. So when it comes to um, you know sales folks that lose the access to edit these fields because the rate is locked or whatever, milestones finished or something, you can copy this into scenario two or three. And so um, you know when you do that, you you have the ability to look at the these fields now. Um, I will tell you that if you look at some of these fields in here, and I'm using the control button on my keyboard and left mouse click, these are these are individual fields. Now, earlier I said, you know, you've got tools that are native, and so you can't modify them. 
But in some cases, you have the ability to find these tools on the input form, whether they're in the local cache or they're in the input form builder. And uh, sorry, guys that are waiting on the outside. Um, these are fields that exist. And if your team loses the ability to edit these fields, you can't edit them over here either, um, unless you take this comparison form and move it into a custom input form. I'm showing you this because if you do have the ability to edit these, these uh, fields, um, you can reset and you can copy them and do a side by side by side comparison. And it again, is it uh, you know down here these pre-qualification results? I don't ever leverage them because I don't really know what red, yellow, green means in the context of current guidelines. But what I can tell you is that each of these columns contains unique fields that turns into a print form. So if we come over here and we print this out, this loan comparison, yeah, not the prettiest or sexiest, um, but it, it can get the job done um, if you're trying to generate something for somebody to read in a, in a side by side comparison. So um, one of those things, again, where doesn't necessarily mean it's perfect, but it's an opportunity for you to look at something side by side, uh, whether it's internal or external. Um, for you to be able to tell, you know, what's a what's an option, you know, for the borrower to choose, option A or option B. Uh, another one, another tool that comes up um, is net tangible benefit. So sometimes you're dealing with loans that do need where you need to document the NTB. Um, that's where you would do it in there. That's one of those tools. I've seen a lot of people turn this into an input form, um, but this is the actual tool that exists. Um, and turns into a print form um, if you have to manage that. Um, another tool that again comes up for uh, sales a lot is the pre-qualification. Kind of goes along with the um, some of the other tools that we we've talked about, but this is a single way to come up with a, a pre-qual like scenario. Um, if you're using Elo uh, Connect or Encompass on the web. Um, when it comes to the opportunities that are in there, this is kind of where you can establish um, what's allowable to have a prequal um, printed or sent to the borrower. So this is, again, a way to stay off the 1003, stay off of any custom input form, um, but in sales, be able to offer, um, and again, in, even like an, an LOA situation or a processor situation where you're trying to figure out something very quick, um, you can come to this pre-qualification tool, <clears throat> pardon me, and you can go through um, these sections to update your file um, for, for what's available. So I like, I like again, in sales, th these are one of the things that I can quickly get on the phone with a borrower um, or a potential borrower and work through some opportunities in one space. Um, without having to jump around um, for basic data input, um, regardless of the 1003. Uh, rent versus own. This is a this is an old <laughs> this is an old one. Um, again, I don't know who's actually seen this or used this recently, but the idea is, um, what are you going? What's it going to look like for you if you rent versus own? And in and of course you're always gaming this to try to make it so that they own, right? You always want your clients to buy. But truthfully, sometimes it's a little bit more complicated than that, um, especially if they're in a high tax area or their MI shoots up because of credit score or something like that. So you want to make sure that, you know, if you if you wanted to find something um, in Encompass that's rent versus own right now for purchase transactions, is pretty helpful. Uh, as far as... Um, as far as printing, there is a rent versus own uh, print form, in case you never knew that. And you can come in and again, I, I, I wanna temper you. This is not something I would ever give to a borrower, um, but it, it's, uh, it's, an interesting, um, uh, it's an interesting way to present it. Just always remind you, your clients, your borrowers and your, your team members, um, you know, you are not a tax preparer. You're not a financial advisor. You're, you're simply uh, a mortgage loan originator if you're licensed. And you're offering options for them. And these are some tools that can help them with that. Uh, a, uh, another tool that is not, uh, I can offer that. Another tool that comes up sometimes if you're leveraging it 
um, and you're using Consumer Connect is a status online. So it's a little bit outside the confines of a necessarily a normal tool, but it's a communications vehicle. It's, it's a way to communicate to borrowers um, to bring them back into your Consumer Connect experience so that they can understand what's happening. Um, so that's a, that's a uh, that's a, a a good way to leverage something inside of Encompass native um, to keep borrowers updated with quick little messages that bring them back into the Consumer Connect conversation without having to send an email, without having to potentially violate an PI or PII. Uh, you just send them a quick note, and it brings them right back into Consumer Connect to read the full message about what you want them to know. Um, so that's that's a uh, a tool that's available. And uh, rounding out here at the bottom, verification, documentation, doc documentation tracking. I don't, again, this is one of those things where if you've never seen this or didn't even know you had this, um, be aware. So uh, there's all kinds of, of like order outs tracking and docs tracking uh, in, uh, in Encompass. Um, what this is talking about is the, uh, uh, the, uh, the VOE or the VOI or the VOA. So if you're ordering any type of automated verifications, this is where you can kind of see it. Um, it's akin to the, uh, the TQL services tool, which I totally skipped over, sorry again. The TQL services tool, TQL total quality loan, it's been out forever. Again, some companies use, use it, um, some don't. What's not in the TQL are the verifications. What you do find helpful in TQL tool is, um, Liv, I'll answer your question in one second. Uh, what you will find in here are, you know, if you have uh, fraud being ordered, I love it personally for compliance. So anytime you order a compliance review, preview or review, it'll be noted here. So you can see all of your orders and all of your results in one place. Um, but notice again, the categories are predefined. You can't modify that. Uh, going back to the verifications, Lou, but you asked, are, are all vendors on the verification tracking? My understanding of the way this works, because I've never um, used it personally, is anytime you order uh, any VOA, VOE, VOI, it should travel here. If it doesn't work for you, I would check with your vendor on what their integration status is, um, or obviously open up a case with us. Um, and the last one is what we're working with clients on um, right now, which is basically helping either start or fully um, develop um, task-based workflows. So what we're looking at here on workflow tasks, which is the last tool in the list, is uh, it's Encompass on the web, but you're allowed to get to the tasks here in the loan file. Um, not to be confused with the task tool, and I intentionally skipped over that. I guess it was a Freudian slip there. So the native tasks here, which have been around forever, um, are okay, right? It's it's a it's a text, it's a text, it's a checkbox. Did I finish it? Did I not finish it? There's no way to bring up the thing that you want them to look at, whether it's a field or whether it's a document. And that um, couldn't be farther away from where workflow tasks are. So these little guys are actually um, are actually in, let's see if I can get this to expand. I don't have any in there. Great, I didn't create any. So administratively, you gotta create a task. And when you create a task, you can certainly do the background. If you're an admin, do the background research on task-based workflows. Again, mortgage workflow partners can help you with this if you're interested, but unsure about getting it done. You basically have a frame in here of the task and then the item that it's related to. Now, your functionality is limited in desktop. If you really want to fully uh, take advantage of um, task-based workflows in Encompass, all it does is, all it means is you just need to get the team to Encompass on the web. Um, and yeah, I think I think uh, when we get back into July, Luba, I think doing a work, uh, task-based workflow deep dive and working that, I think is great. So great suggestion. Um, how to set it up, you know, start small. I usually tell people start with departments that are task focused, whether it's a QC team or an appraisal team or a disclosure team, uh, something where you're thinking checklist, 
or you're thinking dynamic checklist, or you're thinking go to this thing like the appraisal we just received and grab this piece of information that's on the appraisal, Lily approves, um, and get that into Encompass because you can put the field here, you can put the document over here, and you can put the task up here. That's kind of the way it looks. That's the way I want you to visualize it looking. So um, yeah, Lou, I'm all for it. Uh, Brian, thanks for coming. I'm all for it for setting up her appraisal desk, uh, going over that use case, um, or disclosure desk for setup team. Lou, I think those are all practical ideas. So that was my quick run through, through tools for sales and operations. Um, hopefully this gained some, uh, gave you some knowledge and some insight on, on what some of the things are. Um, for anyone else, any questions before we break for the day? As a reminder, um, starting July 6th, the Zoom link is going to be dead. The only way you're going to get to uh, have fun on these meetings is get over to uh, masteringencompass.com. Go to the uh, Mastering Compass uh, uh, collection, and then in the events, you'll see the meeting. You can add it to your calendar, give yourself reminders, um, and that's where all the replays will be um, as well. You can find all those replays there now. Looking for the hashtag replay. You got it, Chris. Thanks for the uh, thanks for the attendance and, and the information. Everybody else, have a safe 4th of July. Please keep all digits away from fireworks and protect your pets. We've got dogs and they usually go um, into a panic. So please protect all your pets and be mindful of your neighbors. Have a wonderful 4th of July. And uh, thanks again for coming. And thanks for being part of the, the best community ever. Take care.